watercolour trees. In today's video, I've got three essential tips and we're focusing on brushes. So I've done a little drawing of a close up of a tree using something like this as a bit of inspiration. And of course, initially I would start out perhaps using just a standard watercolour brush. Let's put some tree trunk in. So before we get onto these special brushes, one little handy tip I've got for you here, and you see I'm not painting this at all neatly here. It's not a proper painting, it's just a demonstration. One tip I've got for you here is I'm using burnt sienna, which is a bit too warm for a tree trunk. So I'm gonna get a little bit of ultramarine and I can just cool that color right down. If I were doing a proper painting, I would probably take a little bit more time to uh, actually find something a bit more suitable in terms of color. But you see, once you learn color mixing, you don't need a huge range of colors. So the paints I'm using today are by Jackman's Art Materials. That's Jackman's, not Jackson's. The details are in the video description if you want them. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start leaving gaps because tree trunks don't sit neatly on top of all the foliage. There are gaps where the foliage shows through. I'm gonna show you a couple of brushes for putting foliage in in a minute. But before we do that, let me show you the first brush that you can use for tree painting. And this is a rigger. So a rigger is really great for getting those tiny fine branches. And you might put these in at the beginning, but you also might put them in at the end actually, or really a combination of both. So this is a type of round brush. It's long and thin, which means that you can get these fantastic little tree branches in. As I said, some of these would be better put on at the end. But this is a great brush for getting those details in. Again, we can break them up if we want to and have little gaps so that we can put our foliage in. I'm gonna show you next a couple of the brushes that I use regularly for doing foliage on trees. So one of the first brushes I use is an old toothbrush like this. You can splatter with these, but you can also paint with them. And that's something that's not spoken about much. You want to make sure that it's one, I mean, originally, you know, before it got 100 years old, it had those jagged edges, which is a really great type of brush. I've just dipped it in some water, as you can see, because it's dripping all over the table. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint with it like this. So you can see that you start to get, so I'm just gonna dip in some ultramarine as well, these broken areas. You'll need to keep it quite wet. And you want to vary the colors that you're applying. What I like to do actually is put lighter, more yellow colors on the outside edge and at the top and then you can go darker further in where you naturally have shadow. And in places, of course, I'll take my standard round brush and join up some of these areas. You want to be careful to leave plenty of gaps. Of course, if you were doing this on a full painting, you would have put some sky in behind so that the sky shows through. And this way you get a very three-dimensional tree. So we're just blending those areas where we need to, but also leaving those brush strokes on display. And my tree trunk is still a bit wet. I would probably have let that dry. So a toothbrush is a great brush that is slightly jagged. And of course you can also, if you want to, splatter to get smaller textures. If you are enjoying this video, can I ask you to do me a quick favor? Can you please click that like button, that thumbs up button? If you like, share, subscribe, or leave me a comment here on YouTube, all of these things are free. It will help my channel to grow and I can teach more people like you how to paint and draw. Now the last brush I'm gonna use is a band brush that I've adjusted. So what I did was I got a little pair of hairdressing scissors or nail scissors, embroidery scissors, anything sharp, and you just hack into the end there so that you get a jagged edge. That stops you getting these sort of unnatural curves, but the curve is good, but you want it to be broken up. Now you can buy ready-made brushes like this. You can buy all sorts of rough, scruffy brushes for tree painting. They have names like rakes and tree brush and all sorts of other fancy names. They can be very, very expensive. This is a De La Roni graduate. It's an acrylic brush. They're cheap as chips, and you can just adjust it yourself and save yourself a bit of money. 
And what we're going to do with this is you can press like this and get these sort of rounded marks. So you can see how you get a much smaller type of mark with this. See here how I've put up too much water. It's got a bit wet and so you're not getting that full dry brush effect there. So it works best when it's a little bit dry so we can dry it off here. This one I actually find is even more effective for distant trees. So if you've got trees that are a long way away, just out in the horizon, then this is a really good brush for that. And you can get these lovely broken marks. Again, joining up where you need to with your round brush. And you can see if we had, if we had some distant trees on the horizon here, you can see how effective they are for those little ones. Even more so, I think, than for larger trees. Remember, watercolour re-wets when dry, so if you've got any areas that are just looking a bit harsh and they don't quite look blended enough, you can just add some clean water until you get the effect that you want. Of course, I've taken a very messy wet into wet approach with this particular tree. Thank you so much for watching this three essential tips video. Before you leave this video, don't forget to have a look in the video description. I've got lots of free stuff down there for you. I've got free downloadable PDFs with art tips on. I've even got a free watercolor painting mini course that you can take. Don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this one. And you can watch another one of my videos right now.